Hi, I'm Ben Woodruff, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Merlins. Merlins are members of the falcon family. They're the second smallest falcon in North America, but don't be fooled by their size. These falcons are incredible hunters. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about what they hunt, how they're used, and the rich history. They've been used in falconry for over a thousand years. Merlins are a circumpolar species. This means they live in the northern part of the northern hemisphere. In North America, we have three recognized subspecies of Merlins. The first subspecies is the Richardson's Merlin. This is the lightest and largest. The second is the Columbaris Merlin. These are a bit smaller and darker. And the third is the Suclei Merlin, or the Black Merlin. These can be dark enough to be considered completely black and are stunning. Properly identifying the subspecies and the age takes time and experience. When trapping a Merlin, it is wise to have an experienced falconer along to help you. But across the board, male Merlins, once they are a year old or older, get blue wings. Now, this is most distinct in the Richardson's Merlins. Although they're small, Merlins are compared by many falconers to being quite similar to a miniature version of a Jeer Falcon. Now, I agree with his assessment. Jeer Falcons are the largest falcon in the world, but the mentality and many of the flight styles of a Jeer and a Merlin are quite similar. For their size, Merlins have enormous feet. Their toes are extremely long. This is because they are bird hunters. And looking closely at their feet, this is one of the biggest structural differences between a Merlin and a Kestrel. Although Kestrels occasionally do hunt birds, their primary targets in the wild are rodents and insects. And this is reflected in the size and the shape of their toes and feet. Another interesting comparison is that of a sharpshin hawk on the left to a Merlin on the right. Look how much more robust and powerfully built the Merlin is, despite the similar dimensions. I've used Merlins extensively to hunt doves, pigeons, and quail, but their traditional use in medieval falconry is a bit different. Princesses and queens favored hunting with Merlins, and the typical quarry that they wanted to pursue is a bird called a skylark. Now, in North America, the closest relative would be the horned lark, which lives in the prairies and deserts of the United States and Canada. But horned larks are protected by law, and so falconers do not hunt this species. Instead, most North American Merlin trainers hunt starlings. European starlings are non-native, invasive, and do a lot of damage to native wildlife. In North America, these non-native flocks uh, fly in flocks of hundreds of thousands. Training Merlins to hunt these flocks and watching it is like observing a shark hunting a school of fish. It's incredible to watch the athleticism. Because of their small size, most falconers keep their Merlins indoors and do the first half of their training indoors to keep their weight management right on par. But once training flights begin outdoors, uh, the Merlins usually are very intelligent and quickly learn the name of the game. On a lure on the ground, a Merlin is out of place. You can see this Merlin is trying to run off with the lure. And so the falconer gives a little tidbit as a reward as part of the training to help this Merlin feel safe. Now, uh, you watch me. I'm going to walk in the background. And you can see this Merlin is keeping its eye on me as I walk around the falconer. I'm slowly going to let her see me as being taller than her and a potential threat. Now, as my shadow crossed over, that was a crucial moment. We want to acclimate her and get her used to people on the ground so she feels very safe. Merlins are so much fun to fly. They, they take a lot of fine tuning. It takes a, a religious uh, approach to their weight management to make sure that you're not even off by more than two grams. Uh, but if you fly them and train them correctly, they are one of the most rewarding birds to fly in modern falconry. If you enjoyed this video or would like to learn more about falconry or wildlife, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.